Welcome back to WRSC. I'm Mary Kate, and we're here with the show. The show's name is Jimmy's. Good Times Friday on every Friday. <laughs> it's 10 p.m. on 24 hours earlier tonight. All right, thank you, Jim. All right, and we're back with Finley and Joliet. Hello, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. That was a wonderful song. We just heard a song, Curtain Call. And I'm a big sucker for love songs, and that was perfect for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we didn't have a chance to really talk about this, but uh, we were wondering, you know, where are you guys from? Like, how did you get started and things like that. So where are you guys from? Where's your hometown? Um, our hometown is Joplin, Missouri. And um, we formed in 2007, I think. Oh, man, I'm getting old. Yeah, <laughs> 2007 when I was a senior in high school. And we started playing shows all the time and really bad music. And we were just... <laughs> bad and then I don't know a bunch of events happened where we started getting new members and we started getting better and better and, you know hopefully we're decent you know <laughs> so you guys say you're from Joplin yes yes oh dear the yeah Tornado. yeah that's that's what we get from everybody we've seen while we've been up in Illinois recording is from like <laughs> you're from Joplin I don't know, I don't know. yeah it it affected us my both my grandmother's houses were hit they were torn down by the tornado and then my dad's business was also hit as well. But Logan is from Joplin as well. We were all there actually together recording when everything happened. So So what was your immediate reaction when the tornado hit, when the storm was going on? Well, we really had no idea. I mean, we were just sitting there tracking, and all of a sudden the power went out, and our phone service just died. Like, we couldn't figure out what was going on. And we were just sitting there jamming, and then finally my dad was like, hey, you guys might want to go out and check out what's going on. Heard there's been a pretty bad storm, so we go out right in uh, Jim's car, and uh, James' car, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, we were going around, and dude, it was just devastating. I, uh, your throat just clogs up, dude, and you can't breathe. It's just like, man, what is going on in my town, man? I've grown up here, like, it's just crazy. Yeah. Wow. So did you look outside, and was it green? Was it like that? You know, they say it's green. It was, we didn't even see the tornado. Yeah, it was afterwards. Yeah. And, I mean, oh, wow. Yeah, it was. You can we were just like visible. in the studio, uh, just watching the rain outside, and we were just like, oh, it's raining, hailing, you know. But we didn't think anything had happened. And then we actually started driving around, and it was just, you know, devastating. We just, actually helped an old lady. Yeah. Yeah. We, how'd, uh, how'd that? You helped somebody? What, what happened? Yeah. She, um, she was. In Walmart, correct? Yes, yeah, she yeah. was in Walmart. She was in Walmart when Walmart got hit. And Walmart's flattened, by the way. There's no more Walmart. Yeah. So. <laughs> so she was in Walmart, and she walked from Walmart, walking back towards her house, and she was maybe <coughs> three blocks from her house, something like that. She yeah. already walked probably good She probably walked. 13 blocks. Yeah. yeah. And, and she was probably seven. So wow. completely soaked from the rain. Yeah. yeah. So we, we helped her. We... Um, we drove her back to her house, and the crazy thing was is that she didn't know if her house was still there or not. Wow. And so we drive up, and the house directly to the right and left of her were just gone, and hers was still there, and it was just, we were like, I actually wow. had to break the back window to get into her right. house, and mm -hmm. she didn't have her keys on her or anything. And she couldn't walk because her knee was hurting, and I asked her, I was like, are you okay? And she goes, yeah, I think I like, really hurt my hand and maybe broke it. I was like, do I need to call a doctor or something? And I sat her down on her front porch, and they were going to break the window and she's like no I was in the military so she was oh. tough <laughs> she was a tough her her husband both were yeah so her husband she couldn't find at the oh, time wow. and so I mean it's I, I never wish it to happen on anybody but like CNN mm -hmm. and Fox News have no clue what's going on the pictures don't do it justice yeah. so we Julia had an idea to to take pictures of the destruction and mm -hmm. put that as our CD cover and some of the proceeds of our CD will go back to the city because like I mean those are my roots like that's that's our roots and that's yeah. where we're from and they supported us as a band and we can support them as a city so I mean we'll see like we'll see you know hopefully the CD sells well and help that job a little bit more. Well that's very that's very heroic and noble of you guys to be doing that. Well we're, we're just doing it's it wonderful. because you know it's home that's like yeah. I hate to see it like I had friends die and just like those, those are those are the people that I would hang out with on a regular basis. Yeah, they grew up with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, but you, life goes on. You got to move on, and 
it could be worse, you know, it could be completely worse. You know, exactly. It's sixty percent of our town's gone. Well, it could be a hundred, you know. So well, how do the um, how do how do the citizens of Joplin feel like? Like I mean, you know, just by talking to them, you know, and you know, you know, like you guys being from there, you know, like what are they, you know, like how is everybody acting? Like what is the general morale? Well, some have been really sensitive to the fact and really grateful for the help, but. I mean, when we were going it's out stressful. Help, yeah, it's, it's stressful. stressful, and we can't blame them for being mad. You know, one woman told us we were gawking. We really? were just trying oh, to help really? people. But, you know, you can't help. You just lost your home. I'd be upset, right. too. Yeah. And so, and I mean, you know, what's funny is that, like, nobody knew where Joplin was until a week and a half ago, and they were like, oh, no, mm-hmm. there's no more Joplin. So, I mean, now we get, some people, we get the looks, they're just like, why are you here and not there, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, but... It's okay, like, we're all stressed out about it. You know, people won't understand until they're in the action, until they're in the moment of looking. When you can stand at Walmart and see eight miles down the road and see the hospital that was destroyed. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's everything's just leveled, it's flat, it's yeah. awful. Now, have you guys written any songs about it at all yet, or do you guys think you guys are going to, or? You know, I thought about it. Um, it's a really tough subject to talk about, you know? Like, I mean, even with, like, I, my grandparents lost their homes, and I had friends die. But I don't know yet. I haven't decided. I, it's a whole ethical issue. Is this something that I... Because I don't want profits off of anything, you know. Like, that's not what I would do it for. But I've, I've thought about it. I've thought about it a couple times. So, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe down the road. i got to give it some time to settle it. How how has this experience um, changed your life? I mean, you know, it obviously has, but how... You know, you know, lo- Logan, man, like, you know, how do you feel now that it's actually happened, like, looking back? Well, I mean, all the places you're used to going just aren't there anymore. And, I mean, you can think in your head about all the friends you had that might have lived in that area or anything, and it's like, man, I can't even, you can't even start to even make a list of, like, who you possibly could have known. And it's just like, man, did I know somebody who's gone? Like, and your mind's just racing, yet, you know, you just can't get back into the normal groovy life, man. It's... It's just a different town. It's yeah. And we even talked the other day. We were driving around, and we were like, we don't want to go past this certain street in town because that's where that's it all where starts. It's and we just we couldn't do it. We couldn't turn that way. So yeah. we had to go the opposite way to get around. And so. one of the craziest parts, like right after it happened, was driving through the town and people just... There's people everywhere. Yeah, yeah, people everywhere, but not really doing a whole lot. Just standing, just looking out, and like they have no idea what to do. Like, they have no idea. So it was that was just like, you know, at the same time, they're thinking that, and we're like, we don't know either. It's just like, mm-hmm. it's unbelievable. Very blessed to have yeah. everything we oh, have yeah, still. Yeah, definitely. So. so what's the best type of attitude that you guys had? Have you turned to religion? Have you turned to family? What has been your support throughout this entire experience? Well, we're all, we're all Christians. We're, we're straight up Christians. We're, we go to... We went to a Christian university, you know, and he's grown up in the church as well. And it's just been, you know, stuff like this turns a nation to prayer, but soon this stuff will fade if, if we could keep it like this. I feel like the nation would be stronger, you know, because, and that's a Christian perspective. I can't talk for everybody else. I mean, mm-hmm. I know they feel the same way, but, yeah. you know, like we we are Christians and we don't have a problem saying that. And for like my church has been helping out, I've been helping out with them and as much as we can, because the only attitude that you can have is you can look at the, the, the glass half full or half empty. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I refuse to look at it in the negative side. I want I want to know that, you know, it could be worse. And it could be. It could be way worse. But it's not. And we have to look past that. And for the people that survived, like me, Jim, and Logan, we're supposed to be helping the people and being out there and, you know, doing what we can. Right. Now, tell us, man, you know, like, you know, all, you know, all this happening, you know, and how it's made you thought about the future and, and all, like, you know, where do you hope for, for Joliet and Finn, Finley to be within the next year? Like, you know, like, what are your goals? What are you guys here to do? Because you guys have, you guys um, play together in two different bands, which I think is awesome, you know, mm-hmm. because you can have, you know, because you're, you're kind of like compiling two different, you know, you know, two different stacks of like songs, you know. Um, that shows that, you know, I mean, you know, you, you guys have a lot to say and don't want to say it under one, like, head, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. You know, what do you guys hope to do with, with these two projects? Well, 
Joliet is a Christian rock band. We're, we're out to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, and that's what we've always been about since I was 17 years old, and it's never changed. And Finley is more along the lines. Like, we want people to know that love, love is still out there, you know, like, maybe not necessarily if it has to be a guy or a girl, but, you know, love is still out there, and, you know, we need to stop throwing ourselves at guys, throwing ourselves at girls, and just just love one another and, and be kind to one another. Like, we're, I mean, we're, it's a positive message type of music. We're not a Christian band, but my Christian values and Christian influences has pursued it to make it a happy experience to listen to. Like, we want this, and he was saying, like, longevity has been our big word lately that we want our music to be a longevity toward a sort of thing so like we want the 50 year olds to listen to this and bob their head a little bit you know and enjoy it whereas like Juliet is made for the younger crowd like yeah. i don't even really listen to which family's made for younger yeah yeah too. yeah it's it's an all ages thing like have a good time you know but but, but I, I think both are just we're aiming towards just being extremely personal mm-hmm. with right. everyone, you right. know, no matter what their situation is. Yeah. Just being able to talk to them. And we we all wear our them. hearts on our sleeves, and we don't hide that in our lyrics. We don't hide that in any of our music, and we want people to know how we feel. And If they don't like that, they don't have to listen to our music, but we want them to because we feel like we can give them a positive message about something. Right, right. Now, when you got, you know, we were talking earlier about being in studio, and, you know, that's obviously different than being on stage and you, you know you, you guys were saying that when you're in studio you know you know it's it, it's kind of hard to have to like have someone telling you how to how to do it tell me about your thoughts when you're on stage where it's just you being like all right this is how i'm gonna present it you know what what are your guys thoughts when you're on stage do you guys really like track those i mean or like what are you guys you know generally thinking out there I, um i think <laughs> when we before the show actually starts, I think just a sense of nervousness, you know, it's just the basic kind of thing. Always, even when you do it every night of your life, yeah. you know, 25 days straight, you're still nervous that last and final night, even though there's like six kids out in the crowd watching, you're still, <laughs> you still got the jitterbugs still going. I don't even know why. Yeah. I, mean, I don't understand, but we, Joliet shows, even Finley shows, are high level, high intensity. Like, kids need to get into our music because we're working hard up here like we're not we're not messing around we are we are serious about our music and we're serious about why we're up here you know and if your venue is paying to have us then we're going to work those no. like we say like every night before we get on stage we say it's time to go to work boys and we take 30 minutes that's our 30 minutes of work every day that we've put in hours of just time tons of money into and we say this is 30 minutes of work this is what we're, we've worked for. And even if there's one person saying, if there's no people sitting there, it's just the venue owners, we still play. Mm-hmm. So it, it doesn't matter. Like, we're we're a high-intensity band. Our shows are all over the place. We break guitars. We, we yeah. do everything. So. What, is, what, is one of the, what is one of your personal favorite shows that you guys have ever played? I love Dubuque, Iowa. That's my favorite place on the face of the earth to play. That and Mason City, Illinois. Yeah. Why, why is it? They are the craziest kids. They want, they want to have a riot every single time that we play, and it's like that for any show that comes through there. So they don't care who's playing. Their local scene is so strong that they're gonna show up to any show yeah. that we put on. And like we cannot be playing, you know, during the set, just like have a little break, and they're still jumping around. That's and awesome. Like, yeah. What do you have to do? It's and always it positive. Works. I mean, we love it. We right. Love it. It's always positive feedback. Yeah. That that that's yeah. really awesome, man. Logan. Tell us about whenever you are producing a song, you know, whenever you're working with a band, what is it that you're looking for them to do? You know, like, what do you listen for? Like, what do you usually be like, all right, guys, you know, this is how I want want you to do it, or do you do that at all? Oh, yeah, I definitely do. That's kind of a problem I have, actually. I can't can't sit there and keep my mouth shut. I always want whoever I'm recording to be the best they can be, and it's more like a quality control thing. Like, with these guys, um, I've just been pretty much sitting back listening and being like, you know, hey, try this here, do this here, you know, just making bands tighter, and definitely with Finley, that's what I've been tracking, um, trying to get really full guitars and, you know, get the most out of the band mm-hmm. that maybe they don't even know they have yet, you know? Totally. But, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, John, you're um, you're going to play us a second song as we yes. fade out tonight. Yeah. Um, tell us about the second song that you're going to play and what it, what it means to you and why you wrote it. Well, this song, actually, I'm getting married in 23 days. Are you really? I oh. am. Wow. Yeah. Thanks. Um, but um, 
my fiance did not like me when we first started, <laughs> like when we first knew each other. And so I wrote this song just about how it <laughs> killed me inside, but and it works out in the end. This yeah. is a Finley song? Yeah, well, a, yeah. yeah it's a Finley song, because I, I can't play the Juliet stuff where you'd have to have a screamer and a whole band, and we wouldn't right. want to do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but it's another Finley song. Yeah. Okay, what, what's, the, what's the name of the song? Coming Back to My Return. Coming Back to My Return. Getting Married in 20... Three days. 23 days, John. That is awesome, man. All right, well, John, we will, we will be right back, ladies and gentlemen, with, with, with John, who's going to be playing us another original song from the band Finley. We'll be right back after this. That's why I registered with Selective Service. I, what's real?